Yeah, hello and welcome to Gouder Acoustic. Uh, today we have a very special issue. We want to talk about feet. Hello, everybody. And what we are, uh, well, what we mean with feet, I think you will know, all know it because uh, you can order different feet for our speakers. And so Volker will explain you what is meant with feet. Yes. Yeah, as Roland told you, we talk about feet uh, and uh, the dark series is available. All the floor standing dark speakers are available with a small foot and with a big foot. So here we have uh, a dark 80, for example, which you can see here. And uh, this one is equipped with the, with the small feet. And uh, we will tell you, we will show you um, the differences between these feet and all the things you can adjust on the feet. So here we have the two different type of foot from the dark series, the small foot and the big foot. And uh, Roland, please explain the differences and the things about uh, which we need to know. Mm -hmm. no, at first you might see that uh, the small foot has just a very elegant shape and uh, nevertheless it is awfully heavy due to the massive aluminum we cut it out from and um, of course if you want a better stability for a stand uh, then we can also give you the big foot and you see the big foot is, mu is really much bigger <laughs> and it's much heavier and uh, it has several features which help you to adjust the speaker so um, one of the first features is that it has a four spike feet, which can be adjusted in height. And um, if you take a look at the foot, then you can see that here we have a scale very close to the foot, which we can bring up and down by turning the knob here. So the foot goes up and down and you can level the foot by this water bubble in the back. Mm -hmm. So you always see what you do. Yes, absolutely. And uh, you see, uh, <coughs> it's just ball bearing because uh, if a speaker has 120 kilograms, it's really hard to adjust it by hand if you have no ball bearing and no thread inside. So well, with this, this one, just, yeah, you it's see, very it's easy, huh? Very easy to to use it. Very easy to turn it, uh -huh. and you can easily adjust the height of the speaker and level it out with the water bubble. Mm -hmm. And you always see here at uh, which, uh, yeah. which height you of are. Scale yeah. Which height you are. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but uh, this one, the small foot is also adjustable, isn't it? Yeah, it's not so comfortable, but it's uh, also possible to use this spike we have here at the bottom and ah, you can okay. turn it in and out. And so you can also adjust the height of uh, the speaker with the small foot and you take a water bubble, put it on top and then it's easy done. But why is it necessary to, to adjust the height of the, of the, of the foot? Yeah, what, yeah what? there's just a physical trick we use here uh, in all our speakers. Um, we have the bass reflex system firing down. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, you just, just uh, if you see the hole inside yeah. here with the roundings yeah. and the bass reflex is firing down and therefore uh, <coughs> it is uh, scattered by the floor and so it excites the, the room very evenly. Uh, that's a big advantage. So you can put it close to the walls and it doesn't affect the sound. But <coughs> of course, if you turn the knobs down, so if the height of the, of the <coughs> foot uh, and the floor is small, then it increases the bass response. Of course, it's not so precise then, but uh, you have a very, very high bass response. If you pull it up with the knobs and uh, increase the distance between uh, the, the, the bottom rib and the floor, then uh, you have less space, of course, and it's more precise. So, <coughs> excuse me. In other words, with the with the adjustment of the of the of the foot, mm -hmm. you can adjust the sound of the bass and the yes. strength of the bass. Yes, you can do it. 
Oh, yeah, fine. so this is just another mm -hmm. option. And so the knobs are really helpful yeah. to adjust the speaker to the room. Yeah. So Roland, the next thing I want to know is about these, uh, these binding posts. I think they are from WBT, mm -hmm. German manufacturer. No, of course, yes, we always use WBT. And, uh, yeah, since a long time, <laughs> I know. And uh, these are more or less the same, but uh, what, what, what can we do with this and these one? Please yeah. explain us. Of course, uh, we always deliver the dark speakers and many other speakers in our series uh, with uh, a bi-wiring uh, terminal and the binding posts. They are really from WBT. It's, it's no fake, <laughs> just <laughs> to tell the people. And uh, uh, if you ha only have a single wiring cable, mm -hmm. And you don't need the wire wiring binding posts. Then you can just um, ah, okay. put this cable here with the silver cord between. Oops. And so you can then you have connect the connection. connect mm -hmm. the inputs, and you only need one cable. Okay. So in this one here with the with the cable, oh, yeah. it's nice. It's nice made, isn't it? Uh, really, it's silver cable. But so you have a you a, have another one. Yeah, we tried this one the, here. Well, of course, we always try many things to increase the sound, and uh, so we came up with the idea to use a massive four millimeter uh, copper plate uh -huh. coated with a twenty four karat gold, of okay. course. Yeah, for amazing oxidation, and uh, yeah, you can connect the two inputs mm -hmm. with. Uh, <clears throat> this copper plate, and this gives a very, very good connection between two inputs, and uh, it's e it sounds even better than the cable. Mm -hmm. So we just tested it, and we were shocked how good the effect is. And so within the uh, double vision version, you always get such a plate bridge to connect the two inputs. So, Roland, another remarkable thing on these feet, mm -hmm. I see this on the small foot and also on the big foot, is this one here for the, yeah, for the, the jumpers. Yeah, the sockets uh, for the jumpers, yes. Would you please explain us what, 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 what can I do with this, mm -hmm. with these adjustments? Yeah, you see, it's, it's the same thing from, for the small foot and the big foot. And um, we have uh, invented this room equalization system all over the years because we noticed that uh, our speakers are used in so many different rooms and the geometries, the sizes, the volumes of the rooms are totally different. And the speaker should play perfect in each of the rooms. And so we thought about an adjustment, an easy adjustment without any digital means. Because uh, if you use a digital processor for adjusting anything, then you have to transfer the signal to the digital world, make the calculations, and you get jittery, you get delay, you get a loss of dynamics, and so on. So it's better to do it in the analog world. And therefore, we have these sockets here uh, and here on the feet. And uh, with such a jumper, you already know from our other speakers, we can adjust the bass response and the tweeter, so the uh, high response. Mm -hmm. so and you have three different possibilities yes. to adjust. Yeah, you can put it in. You can yes, put it like just this. A, this is just uh, the middle position. That means linear, zero dB. Okay. And then uh, I can put it out. You can take it out here if, uh, and uh, in, here in the base response on the left side. Then you have the position number one. It's minus 1.5 dB. Uh -huh. and so if you have a small room and you think the base mm -hmm. response is too strong, mm -hmm. too much. You can adjust it with yeah, this. Yeah, you can re reduce the base response. Okay. But on the other side, if you want more base. Yeah. Because you you have some terrible recordings from the 16s like we 16s with like, no bass no, with no bass yeah. then we you can put a little bass inside yeah you can put a little bass inside so it's not only a room adjustment system mm -hmm. it's also a thing of matter of taste yeah but uh, it controls the complete range of yes. the of the bass driver yes absolutely doesn't it yes it's not a special uh, enhancement of special frequency ah, okay it's the the, the bass drivers they get more energy Minus 1.5 dB, 0 dB, or plus 1.5 dB mm -hmm. for the whole uh, um, base range where the woofers work. And the same thing with the tweeter. Yes, the same thing with the tweeter. So also uh, minus 1.5 dB, 0 dB, and plus 1.5 yeah. dB. No, it's in, uh, for, for the tweeter, it's the other way around inside. Yeah. If you have the middle position, it's 0 dB is linear. If you take it out, then you have plus 1.5 dB. Okay. 
and, and the last one is this put one. Put it inside, then you have minus 1.5 mm -hmm. dB. So, for example, if you have a very reverberant room yeah. with marble, glass, yeah. and hard Many reflections, reflections planes, yeah, then it's good to use the minus 1.5 dB position for the mm -hmm. tweeter, and this helps to adjust. And this is the, the same uh, at the big foot uh, with, with, with the small foot, it's, yes. It's the same. It's ex exactly the same. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, Roland, uh, so we have uh, here the big foot mm -hmm. and we have another pair of sockets here in the bottom of the big foot. Yeah. Uh, and we see this writing here, base extension. Can you please explain us what does this mean and what can I adjust with this yeah. one? Yeah, I will try to do it fast because it's very heavy. Yeah, thank you, Roland, <laughs> thank you. And the next thing is uh, we have uh, this uh, jumper again and we can put this jumper into the two sockets of the base extension. And uh, what a base extension really does and how the function is, I can show you on the I whiteboard. I just put it here, huh? Yes, <laughs> please. So Roland, uh, let us talk about this particular <laughs> jumper, uh, about the, the base, base extension. extension. On the bottom, please yeah. tell us what what is what is behind base extension. What yeah. means base extension? Yeah. What is the benefit of base extension? Okay, yeah. So please let me draw some diagrams to show and illustrate this. Uh, as usual in Hi-Fi, we always plot the amplitude or the loudness over the frequency. And uh, normally, you know, it uh, looks like this. That's just a typical base response of a hi-fi loudspeaker. And uh, so here you have a, an F3 point, which corresponds to a certain minus 3 dB frequency. And uh, of course, you won't always have a linear response down to the very low end of the acoustical uh, region and um, yeah, but, but this is this is the normal thing of a normal speaker. Yeah, of course. So below this point, there is no more power. Oh. No more power, of course. Yeah, because uh, if you want to go down deep to the low end of the base, you need to have a big, big yeah. cabinet. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people don't like big cabinets, mm. and uh, so I thought about uh, a compensation for this, and I came up with a system which is called the high-pass filtered base reflex system. Okay. And it works like this. Imagine just a, you have a um, base response like this, which goes down, 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 deep, and takes this up like this here. And so if we compare the two <coughs> frequency responses, we have an additional area of output in this region. And uh, with the same cabinet size, just because of the filtering of the system. So the thing is, uh, because of your high filtering of the base, <coughs> you get more, more frequency response here, more power yeah, more in, energy in this inside. region. Yes, yes, really, yes, yes. So you really found the Perpetuum Mobile because <laughs> this one is only advantage, isn't yeah, it? No, 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 of course not. There is no Perpetuum Mobile. Um, I take the energy from the amplifier. Ah, okay. And uh, I think in the modern days with our modern amplifiers, this is a good thing to do. Yeah. Of course, in the 60s when we had uh, tubes with 10 watts or something like that, wouldn't that be a, such a good idea? And that's why people never did this high-pass filter uh, base reflex system. But nowadays, we have so many good transistor amps or even digital amps, uh, which have a lot of power. And so I can take the power from the amplifier. And how do I do that? Okay, I will show it to you in the impedance plot. This is what I wanted to ask you, because if I really would like to play your speaker with my beloved single-ended tube amplifier mm -hmm. with, uh, with a normal bass extension, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah, just um, okay. don't be so fast. <laughs> okay, so will, please tell us. I will just please tell show us. you what uh, a normal uh, loudspeaker uh, does. It's a, a four ohm loudspeaker here, yep. this blue one. And we have a impedance plot like this. So this is the normal impedance plot this of, is the of normal a base reflex plot loudspeaker. Of, of, this, of this base reflex okay. loudspe loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you get such a transfer uh, function. But if you use a high pass filter system like we do, then you have something like this. 
Uh huh. So, but it's it's lower here, huh? Yes. You Isn't see, it? we go down to two ohms. Mm -hmm. Stay here, and then eventually come up with. And of course, the lag here in between is just the more energy we need from the amplifier to create such a transfer function. So, if the amplifier is able to put this power inside the speaker, there will be no problem. Of course not. Okay. And that's what I think of. Um, you can have a small size speaker going down very deep and you just need a good amplifier, but we have so many good amplifiers. The next thing is uh, we, with this high pass filter, we cut off. Yeah, you cut off these subsonic frequencies. Absolutely, yeah. So if you have a turntable and you normally put in a subsonic filter, you don't need it with our speakers. Yeah. Even if the amplifier produces DC, in output. No problem with our speakers. It doesn't kill the speaker. No, because it blocks DC. Okay, okay. And so this is just uh, the high pass filtering has a lot of advantages. And uh, also, if you have a small room. Yeah. And uh, you have a, a, a frequency response like that because of the room. And so you have a big bump in the base. And in the low end, you have even more. This happens if you put the speaker into the corner or yeah, close that, to the wall. And that's typical if you yeah, put it's it typical in, effect. in the and, corner. Uh, <coughs> and so you have a big bump here and big booming effect here. I just um, let me draw it a little bit more exact. And uh, then we take the base extension jumper out. Yeah. And then what happens is just the next very interesting thing. We have a frequency response like that. And so, <coughs> you, compared, cut off, you cut mm, off this. Compared to the normal bass reflex system, we cut off the low end here, which is responsible for the big booming in the room. We don't need this energy here. And so the, the, the impedance goes up to something like that. Uh, this is really fantastic. Yeah. So, so you can, <coughs> may I call it adjust? Yeah. You can adjust your speaker to the room. Yes. To the place in the room where you want to place your speaker. Yes. And second thing, you can adjust it to the amplifier. So more or less any amplifier can drive the speaker. Yes, absolutely. You can drive it with a single and a triode amplifier. Oh, that's really something. So, Roland, what we can adjust with this feet is a lot of things. Yes. We can adjust the base. The base, yes. The base, so the volume of the complete base range of the speaker. Absolutely. You can adjust in three points. Yes. You can adjust the, the volume highs, the of the highs of yeah. the tweeter. Yes. And <coughs> on the other side, on the bottom of the feet, you can adjust the base extension. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, you can also adjust according to the room, according to the position of the loudspeaker yeah. in the room. Yes, with the base expansion you can uh, use two different transfer functions. One transfer function is with the yeah. very, very deep low end, which causes a lot of energy, which, use, which needs a lot of energy from yeah. the amplifier. Or you can take the green response curve, and then you have the green impedance curve, which is just needing less energy than a normal speaker. And so you can use even a small single and a triode amplifier for your speaker. So you can use this speaker with any room and any amplifier. Absolutely. That's Fine. what we try to do. That sounds perfect.